For those of you that haven't had a chance to meet me directly yet, my name is Julie Graham. I'm the new principal here at Beachwood School. Um, I would like to introduce you to our superintendent. This is Dr. Mitch Hubby. Thank you very much. First of all, let me say thank you for being here. I appreciate the fact that you um, care enough about Beachwood School to be here. Not that others don't care, because I know that there are a number of people that are working. And we'll, We'll be having another meeting at 7 just to accommodate those people that um, are not going to be this one. But what I'd like to say that the reason that I'm here is because for our, our board and our district, our students, staff, and community are important to us, and Beachwood is a great school. It would be, it would be wrong to associate Beachwood School with other schools in other, in other counties and other districts because we do great things at this school and we're here because we care. I'd like to also introduce before I go any further that, and also say that we have had tremendous support from the Fort PD and with me here this evening is Acting Chief Dan Hughes and Sergeant Steve Williams who has been working with us on this investigation. I'd also like to thank Julie Graham, our principal. She's doing this phenomenal job. And Kathy, I call my assistant. The reason that I thought best to, to have this meeting is I know that there are some concerns and the purpose of this meeting is to help dispel information that may not be accurate. We need to know that, that what I'm about to share involves an ongoing investigation and for the district is a personnel matter and therefore I am limited in what specifics I can and cannot share. What I do want you to know is that Mrs. Graham brought a report of inappropriate conduct by a teacher to the district office attention this past Friday, uh, February 24th. The district office responded with an immediate investigation. And we do so because anytime there are children involved or there are other staff involved, we do so to make sure that we follow proper procedure and we do so to make sure that we follow the proper guidelines and that we protect our students as well as our staff. You need to know that as part of this investigative process, a teacher was placed on administrative leave and that we contacted, I contacted the Fort Police Department and asked them to assist us in the investigation to make sure that we follow all the proper process and guidelines. At this current time, it's important for you to know that there is no evidence that exists that any child has been a victim of crime. And that this is an ongoing investigation, and it's the policy of the Fulton School District to err on the side of caution, and that it's important that you know that the safety of our students and staff are always in place for us. And basically, that's what I can share. Uh, it is an ongoing investigation, and I can't share any additional information. I don't know if there are thoughts or comments. Yeah, I'll take questions. But again, I just want you to know that I cannot share specifics. No, my question is, has the person been arrested and going to be out of the No, the person has been placed on administrative leave, and they're, we're in the middle of an investigation. So the set investigation will be talking to children? Will that be done with our knowledge? Yes, as part of it, I don't know, maybe you can address the, the investigative process. <clears throat> Well, again, thank you for being here. And I, I just wanted to, to say, sometimes it gets frustrating when you go to meetings and then you don't get a lot of information. So one of the things that we wanted to do here is to at least provide information that was accurate. And uh, this is an ongoing investigation from the police side. At least kind of want to let you know what the process, uh, what, what occurs, and what has happened. Uh, again, as Dr. Hovey said, on Friday, they were notified uh, of a, um, an incident involving one of the teachers. I think it's very, very important that you hear nothing else, please hear this, that there was nothing involved in the conduct of this teacher that's involved with any student at all. So there's been no crime that, that we can find that has taken place with any student from this school whatsoever. I think that's very, very important for you to hear. And uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to be, because so many times 
when a teacher gets put on administrative leaves, so the allegations that are made, oh, I bet it was this or I bet it was that. And then it brings a lot of anxiety that takes place. And, uh, and something happened very similar like this at a school that my kids go to. And so one of the ideas was let's get out in front, let's, let's make sure we let the parents be engaged in this process so they can clarify things uh, that are not really necessary. And I won't point out that it was your phone, okay? <laughs> 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 I know, I'm just kidding. Probably mine or my father. Uh, so again, the purpose is to make sure you have that information so that that misinformation is not put out. Nothing involving any of your children have been proved they're involved with anything involved with the children who are investigating. Uh, but I think it's important with as much as it's going on in the press right now that you see that your, your school and, and this district did exactly what they should have done. We contacted the police and asked them to assist with that investigation. And so that began Monday, and it, it, it continued to about 3 o'clock in the morning this morning, and then it, it picked up again today. So how we do our investigations, sometimes it's uh, interviewing other witnesses, teachers and stuff, before any student would ever be interviewed, he would be notified. We have no intentions at this point to interview any students because, quite frankly, there's no indication that any students were involved in any type of crime or anything. If that changes, we will notify you when you know that. But uh, at this moment, that is not taking place. Yes, ma'am. How would the communication be made? Will we be receiving calls or will we see something in writing that with our kids? Or how will we be updated? How often? You would be you would receive something on one one. We would notify if you were going to interview one of your students, we would, we would probably work with, with the school as well as one of our detectives would notify and say, this is what we like to do. And you're more than welcome to be present for that. How about updates on the case and when it closes if you guys come to a resolution or anything like that? Would you guys well again, right now all this is is an investigative thing. I mean, again, I think it's very important because sometimes when you when you hold meetings and uh, you know, rumors start spreading, misinformation is going and I think it's important for this teacher uh, that there's no evidence that they did anything wrong at all. And I think that's an important thing to understand too. But it's only prudent to investigate because again, we're talking about children. And so when we look at, when we look at the safety of the children, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to err on the side of, of our kids to make sure that we do whatever we can to ensure that no child is a victim. And if there is a child that will be loaded by the parents, we should be using appropriate action to be an assistance for the child, and then we prosecute that person to be a witness. Uh, but there's absolutely zero evidence that any child is a victim of anything in this case. And I think that's the most important part. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I know you can't talk about specifics of the case, but can you tell us how you're investigating a uh, property crime? Give us a sense of what you guys are looking at, a misdemeanor, a we're called here, and so obviously we're concerned about what you guys are doing and what's happening. Th those are great questions, and I and I, I actually again part of the danger is this: is sometimes you you, know, you get families involved, and then the, 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 you get the frustration because you don't have enough information. The other danger is waiting a month or two months and saying, "Oh, we we investigated something and you weren't aware." Of it. We went to decide with, "Hey, we want to let you guys know we are investigating." Uh, in terms of a, a, a level of a crime, because we haven't been able to prove that a crime exists, there's not a misdemeanor or a felony. What we're looking at is some, probably some policy issues regarding the school. Again, that has to do with the school that's doing that. The question is, is the legal policy issues result, result in some type of criminal behavior? And just to be on the safe side, when you're dealing with kids and you're dealing with a teacher who has authority over children, and has a lot of lot of uh, influence over them. That's why school districts contact the police to make sure that nothing else takes place because that tremendous authority that they have over the kids. And, that, and that's one reason we were asking. Did you give us a grade level? <laughs> grade level. <laughs> I, I can't. Just because it's last email without, I mean, this is, you have to understand, we got a blast email about, you know, three weeks ago about a family. Email. We don't know where it's coming from. It would be helpful to know 
actually where you're targeting. So some, at least some of us could address it. Sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, can't, I can't speak more to the uh, <coughs> school. I will tell you from the police department. Because you need to understand there's a difference between um, um, their administrative investigation and their criminal investigation. And they certainly have a different, different set of guidelines that they have to follow. I will tell you from, from the police department, we're currently looking at the third grade level, and so we will also be, we will also be looking above that as well. So let me rephrase it better. Are there any accusations of improper activities or behavior with the students? Absolutely not. Okay. And, and again, have, have, you've heard me say it about six times, you're probably going to hear about four more times. Okay. Well, we the third grade. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> the, 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 the idea, and I will tell you that we have specific things later, we will talk about them. But again, we have to be somewhat general in what we say simply because of it being an ongoing investigation within the school and an ongoing investigation with the police department. And uh, again, this is the danger that we have when we have community meetings beforehand. We just believe that it's the right thing to do. And so uh, we're willing for you to be a little bit angry that I'm not providing you with enough information because I at least want to tell you something. Yes, but Dean, just for clarity's sake, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm a little bit confused because you're saying there's zero evidence of any wrongdoing. So I'm assuming you're saying there's no physical or, or, or you know, witness evidence of that. Yet this gentleman just asked, um, are you investigating any wrongdoing? And your answer to that was no. So what exactly is it that you're investigating? Again, good question. If I, if I, if I just, yeah. The wrongdoing has to be, when there, there could be misconduct that, and I'll just use, uh, so we're not talking about a specific case. Let me just kind of go in generalities. So hopefully you have a better understanding. There will be cases at times that we are aware of that, that a misconduct would lead one to believe, hey, maybe there's more to this story. Maybe there's smoke over here. We need to see if there's fire involved as well. And that is what we're in the process of doing. There is absolutely zero information we have that any teacher has been involved in any misconduct with a child at all. We need to make sure of that based upon the other misconduct. Make sure that that smoke that, that was there, that there is no fire. Because we think that's a responsible thing to do. Even as the, uh, the sake of possibly causing a little bit more anxiety, we just want, we think it's right for parents to know about. And if there's really nothing going on, what about the integrity of the teacher that everybody is going to try to figure out who it is and what about their reputation? And, and that's absolutely, absolutely, again, to be Problem, and that's why you are hearing me clearly say there is no absolute zero evidence to this teacher that anything that you're going on. Uh, however, I think what, what's important is that you know that we're still going to investigate. If, if somebody makes, if there is something that alleges that there could be something, we're certainly not going to wait for a, a, a child to become a victim before we're going to investigate. We're going to be proactive and we're going to notify families, and again, we're going to try to make it as clear as we possibly can. If you haven't heard it again, no evidence that this teacher has done anything wrong whatsoever in terms of criminal. But we just believe based upon what we, what we, the misconduct that has been alleged, we have to investigate. And we think it's appropriate to notify parents that we are doing this. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Um, from your perspective, how long might your investigation take to put an image from your perspective? In other words, do we have to worry about this for days or days? Well, from our perspective as a personnel matter, it could take it could take a while, but basically we're waiting for the police to go through their investigation and conclude their investigation. We have also turned it over to our liability carrier and we have our legal counsel that we're working with. So at which point when they are done, then we would pick up and we would based upon what they find would give us directions to at what point we move forward and how to and, and I would say from the police, the police side of it, I could not see us being uh, finished uh, with this any sooner than two weeks. And, and again, that's just as uh, uh, we look at evidence, you know, we look at the potential evidence, it, you know, we want to make sure we get this right. But if we felt that any of your children were in danger, I promise you that you would get another collapse email. You know, Letting you know the difference, but that's not the case. Here. I'm sorry, so I'll get right to you. Yes, ma'am. I actually have a question for the superintendent. Thank you. Obviously, that would be <laughs> <laughs> as far as policy, 
So this person gets released, they're innocent of the investigation. Have you thought about the fact that there could be a personal retaliation that could follow from that person's emotional response to the fact that they were placed on administrative leave, now they're back at the school, and they're concerned about their reputation, that they've lost their credibility because they've been out for several weeks. I mean, would you guys place that particular person back into educating her at the school, or would you place them in a different school? You know, it's hard to answer that question. I mean, they may have that feeling, but as far as we're concerned, I'd rather err on the side of caution right. and make sure we do a thorough investigation because it's important that we maintain a safe working environment for our students as well as our staff. So when it comes to that point, if we think that that's going to be an issue, then we'll deal with that issue. And if we need to make a change, we will. Because we're always going to do what's best for our kids as well as our staff. Perfect. Thank you. My third question is for you. Um, it looks like you're going to be doing some We, we, have to, we have to be careful that when you bring things to children, especially at ages eight or nine, we need to be we, we need to use caution in what we share. Um, we didn't go back to the class and say, oh, by the way, these things have happened. Because I don't know if that's appropriate. The important thing is that you as parents know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, I, I think oftentimes kids are more concerned with coming to school and be with their friends. Understand that. Um, but we've not had it sit down and have a discussion that I'm aware of with, with, with the class. Is that correct? Uh, the teacher gave the kids an explanation for the absence, and uh, we may or may not correct what they did. Um, for those of you in third grade, you would know who that is. You find a link to that. <laughs> Well, the explanation was that he was going to be out of town anyway, and that's the truth. You know, and we don't know that at this point because we haven't concluded the investigation. As we go through the process and once the police force is done and they say, here's what we found or didn't find, then we will conduct our own through our own legal counsel of an independent investigator. And then based upon what they, what they find, then we would know the answer to that question and we would take appropriate steps at that point. Yes. 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 Yes.
But we do have control of what happens on our campuses. Because if, if it, again, if it, if it impedes our instructional abilities to teach kids, then we can ask them to leave. started and it's important that we teach our kids to discern between right and wrong what's true and what's not true um, as far as as a parent for my own kid I would say be careful in what you what you say what you don't say be careful in what you believe what you don't believe um, I don't know as far as in, in your own home as the kinds of conversations you would have with, with your own kids um, but I mean you're, you're free to share with them what we've shared here if they ask you those questions, especially for older students, then why not share the information? I don't believe in hiding things, but there's a level of understood, sort of a level level of maturity, depending whether they're in first grade, second grade, third grade, as compared to fifth, sixth, seventh grade. So I would say if they're older students, yeah, you feel free to share what we shared with you today. And obviously, in in our country, it, we have an obligation to protect our students, and. In our country, you're supposed to be innocent until you're proven guilty. And there is a process we have to follow. We have to protect not only our children, but also our staff. And we have to protect our schools. As I said before, Beachwood is a great, great school. And we certainly don't want anything to take away from the accomplishments and things that we do at this school. Because it's a phenomenal. So as, as far as what you shared, it's sort of your decision. But I would just, uh, I would, again, based upon your age level, sort of choose carefully what you do say or don't say. And be honest with you. Oh. Yes. I know I'm going back to something that you stressed over and over, but this policy issue or violation, I mean, can you give us some ideas of what kinds of policies we might be talking about? Um, this all seems very, you know, vague that something may have happened and so they knew we were notified and now the police are investigating, but there's no evidence of a crime and it was on leave. And, I mean, is there anything else you this? At this point, really not, because it, it does compromise the overall investigation. And when you talk about policy, there are policies and there are unwritten policies as to when you're with kids and when you teach kids and things you should do with students and how to interact with students. I mean, those are things that you teach when you're going through teacher preparation programs. Um, we talk about, you know, proper use of of uh, educational technology in the classroom and our textbooks and the materials that we use. Those are all things that, that we have to take into consideration. But as far as going into more detail, I really can't share uh, too much more about the specifics because it is a, a, a part of this ongoing investigation. I think the important thing comes back to, which I know if I were a parent, I would want to be concerned about the welfare of my own child. It comes back to what Officer Hughes said, is there hasn't been any evidence to this point linked to any kind of a crime that this teacher's committed against your kids at this point. Yes, ma'am. That said, there was enough of a concern for you to take it to the police department, so you're going to be allegated that you have allegation or whatever it is, is true? Is it a crime? Well, again, we're going to err on the side of caution. You may find nothing, but we're going to always err on the side of caution. And if indeed they find something, then, then, then they'll go down and, and they'll follow the proper process and we'll take proper steps as to what we need to do as far as disciplining the employee. But again, that's why it's important that we allow the, the police department to conclude their investigation. This is what we found, and they're far more expert than we are in conducting investigations. And then when they give the information to us, then we will work with our own legal counsel to see what other steps we have to take, if any. Yes, sir. So let's say um, he's found that the evidence didn't um, find anything. I um, mean, he's going back to work. Now, are you going to give us a heads up? Because I may not want my kid back into that classroom, regardless of what, what the outcome is. Because when, when evidence is, is kind of um, being brought out, it, it just looks bad. And yeah. so many times in, in this world has it happened that evidence comes out and then put, put to the side, oh, we investigated, it's done. But years later it comes out that it wasn't all the way followed up with. You understand? I understand your concern, but again, it's it's hard to say what we will or won't do because I still don't have the results of that. 
If everything comes back clean, in all fairness to the employee, he would come. He, he may come back here, but he may he may continue his teaching career somewhere else. I don't know. And that's understandable for sure. Yeah. But I want to be fair to the employee, but we also want to we're, we're going to take into to consideration, obviously, your thoughts as parents. And we want to do what's best for the employee, but we also want to do what's best for our kids. That's going to always be at the forefront of our, of our thinking. So, but, but will you let us know if he's going to come back to work? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's only fair. Our daughter is in that class. How do we ask her without feeding to her what is happening? You know? My daughter spends a lot of time with this guy. And for this, it's like, really? I would say in all fairness, uh, when I tell her, trust him, do whatever you need to do. He's your teacher. He's there for you. Right. right. In all fairness, again, based upon what we find, we will, we will, we will do everything we can to make sure we communicate with you as parents. Um, lightning in the news. This has been a big deal. I'm sure everybody knows that in this room. Um, there was one particular case. Uh, somebody in the, within a school was, had been investigated over and over. Still in a school since 2004. Okay, it's 2005. Now, if he gets onto another school, is that school able to find out what he was being investigated for at this school? So they have a heads up. It's only fair to those children, and it's only fair to those, to those teachers, teachers, staff, and parents. Let me let me say this. We're going to be very um, cautious, and we're not in the business of sweeping things under the rug and under the carpet. And we are going to investigate, and we're going to finish this thing, whether it takes two weeks or a month or whatever, we're going to get to the bottom of it. And if indeed there are things that we find, we're not going to just sweep it under the carpet and put the guy somewhere else. We do have to follow law, and I do have to follow the rules of the Ed Code. And we will, we, will, we will be doing that because we're obligated by law to do that. But we are going to investigate it, and we are going to follow through the completion. And if indeed we find some things wrong, or if we believe that there's going to be things that are damaging the kids, we will not put this guy back in the house. This is a terrifying thing, especially for people who have a child in class. I don't know even what the assertions were. And I will learn more about the assertions probably than the average person that's on the board members will because we're on the board. Um, it is the board's job to find out all that they can legally about what happened and second guess the decisions, behaviors, investigations of the Mitch Hubbies and the Dan Hughes. Um, I, I do want to make a comment though about the question about um, will the other school know? You know, will, will future people be informed? And the unfortunate, you know, the answer is it depends. But the answer is not absolutely yes, they will be. Because the, the laws are so onerous that protect public employees that there are hypothetical circumstances under which things like what happened in LA become very difficult to deal with. So, but, but I will tell you uh, personally, so I'm speaking only for myself as a, as a parent in this school and I happen to be a board member, um, I will not allow anything to happen to children or children be put in danger, I would absolutely risk prosecution. I would risk losing my school board spot. If I think children are at risk, I'll be here and I'll tell all of them. Um, and I don't care who arrests me and I don't care who sues me. That, that's, that's just a fact. So, um, what? Yeah, well, I, but I, but I also want to say another thing because I've, I've been involved in this whole Kelly Thomas thing. I want to tell you, we're really fortunate we got a new police chief. I personally have become friends with this guy. I personally trust this guy. This guy's dad. I'm talking about Dan Hughes here. Um, you know, woe to anybody that screws with children under his watch. And and you will find out. So, um, you know, I'm kind of making a little political comment about, you know, what state government does to affect public employees. But these two guys in this district, and I know all your board members, Heads will roll if kids are in danger. So I don't know if any kids are, but if they are, no one's going to let 
know what was going on in your kids. And, and there is another part of the process, and that's the, team, the commission of teacher credentialing. And if there's anything that violates that, we will immediately send that information to the teacher commission of credentialing, and they will revoke that credential. So we will make sure to follow that process. So it may be uh, that if that, if, if indeed that person has a credential revoked, whether they're in our district or any other district, they're not going to teach. Because if they go to another district, and we have to run criminal background checks on anyone we hire, and we check those things, and if they don't come back clean, we don't hire them. And if anything goes to, to the Commission of Teacher Credentialing and their credentials revoked, they cannot work in any public school or any other school without a credential. Even if he's exonerated? It, it depends upon, it, it, it depends upon the action taken by the Commission of Teacher Credentialing. But if it falls under the line, we will send it to them. They will do a commission hearing, and they will take action on it. And if they revoke that person's credential, that person's done. Yes? Um, I've been here for several years. And um, now I'm at the end of my last one, a couple years ago. Um, past couple of years, there's been zero police presence in the past couple of years. Years prior to that, we've always had an officer either patrolling while we're bringing the kids to school or while we're picking them up. Sometimes it would be on campus as well. As of two years ago, it zero. You think maybe that might help, especially with parents. I felt comfortable. I know, I know several, several of the officers, and I thought it was great. You know, if I did something wrong, I got pulled out, oh well, so be, I get a ticket. But at least it's for the safety of my kids. At the same time, with their presence being here on the campus or being around the campus, might ease some of the some of the tension, would also um, deter somebody that's even working on the campus, knowing that you know we have um, the police present. Uh, is that a possibility of them coming back and being able to you know see what happens? My child was one of them that witnessed the accident that happened uh, a couple weeks ago, and. He hasn't been the same. He's been shaken. Had there possibly, possibly been the presence of the officers here, that might not have happened. We don't know, but it's a possibility. Could that happen? Could it back? Uh, I won't answer for Chief here, but, but I will say we always feel better when our police force is present. And I do know that in, in times past, we used to have resource officers, but because of budget and everything has been slashed, we have lost a lot of those resources because of budget cuts. And I know that's impacted not just the school districts, but it's impacted a law enforcement agencies or fire agencies. So it's impacted a lot of us. I do know that anytime there are issues, we work so well with the Fort PD that if there are specific issues or we need presence, all we need to do is call and they, they show a presence. They are always supportive of all of our schools. So it, yes, it would be nice to have someone up on a regular basis, but we have 20 schools in the district. And if we did for one, we'd be expected also to do for, for all. And I know they do the very best job that they can to support our schools with whatever we need. I'll let you know. Not, not so much them being here on a daily basis, but at least, you know, I haven't seen anybody in two years. Now, if they're going from school to school, it's evident that they're patrolling the areas. But when they're not even here at all, that's saying, wait a minute, if we can put it to the wayside. And there is, I, I've witnessed plenty of people driving through. Not, not just through the parking lot, you're flying by. I mean, going beyond 20 miles an hour in a parking lot just because they want to get a parking spot. Um, not caring whether the crossing guard has their stop sign out, they want to be the last car to get across. And it's just as, as long as people know that hey, they're still around, it slows that down. And we know they're not here. Everybody's free, free will to do whatever they please. I appreciate your comments. And the last thing I'm going to do is talk about budgets because we're just talking about kids who care about budget, right? We want to do the right thing. I hear you. Let me just see what I'll look at and what I can do. I'm not promising you a policeman here all throughout the day. You will see a bigger presence. We have a commitment on that. Um, any other questions for me before we end? I, just, I, just, I think it's very important that you understand some. With, with all of the attention that's been put in the press in LA and other areas, I want to make sure you, at least from my, my impression, understand that when it comes to dealing with the, the safety of children and being cautious and making sure we keep them safe, I can't think of a more textbook way of handling this than what your school district and the school have done. Uh, they could have chosen to wait 
for months until the investigation was completed and they notified the parents. And they just chose not to do that. They could have waited until they handled the internal investigation and then notified the police. They did not do that. They notified us immediately. And I can't tell you how many times we wish other schools have, have done that and other cities and other uh, counties wish that their school had been that responsive. And so I know you, some of you will leave here frustrated if they didn't get as much information as you might have. But please hear that your school did exactly what they should have done on the side of the protection of your children. And uh, they're gonna be committed to that. And again, I know that some of you will be frustrated, but you must understand there are, there's danger when you start doing community <coughs> meetings regarding something that you don't know all the answers about. And they chose, it's still, we're, it's willing to take that risk to notify parents as much as we can to get out and let them know that we're concerned, this is what's going on. And so I would just tell you that uh, we will continue to be working with your school district um, and, and with your principal, to make sure that we try to get this uh, investigation completed as quickly as we can. Or sometimes we have investigations take a little bit longer because we want to make sure we get it right, especially when it's dealing with a teacher who oversees, oversees children. And uh, so I apologize that some of you will leave frustrated. I understand that. Uh, but I think it's in the best interest of the school, our students, and as a parent of the that you understand that they have done exactly what they're supposed to do. I could not be prouder of what the school and what this district is doing. So I'll be available for any uh, comments if you want to yell a little later about the tickets you got. And I will say that if Chris does do something that gets arrested, I hope I'm the only get to do it. <laughs> I want to say also from the school's perspective that we take nothing more seriously than the safety of your kids. The debate was do we have a community meeting because we know you're going to want lots of questions to answer. But there's only so much we can say. But again, erring on the side of working cautiously, I'd rather have a meeting that we've held be able to tell you what we can tell you, to share with you that as we get information that comes forth, if, if more information comes forward, we will continue to be transparent. That's our goal. So rather than wait for months to have a meeting, rather than wait for months to do our own internal investigation, we're like, you know what, we're gonna jump on this because our kids and our staff are important to us and I'd rather make sure we do the thing and do it right and do it thoroughly. So I wanna thank you for coming out. Again, I, I wish we could answer more questions, but we just don't have an answer to everything. But we did want to make the initial contact with you to let you know where we're at, what we're doing. So we, we dispel any misinformation that may, be, that may be out in the community. Just to close with one last comment, I know that some of you in the audience have a higher heightened level of concern than others of you do, um, just because you know where your students are and what classes that they're in. I want to um, give you my commitment that we have a fantastic sub going in the class as of tomorrow who will be here for some time. Um, either I or Mrs. Olavola will be in that class every single day, making sure that your students get the highest quality education that we can provide for them. And so um, I want to ensure you that we will continue to do our job for your children. Um, again, thank you for coming out today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, if you have further concerns, you are welcome to come to me at any time. I will be honest with you and say, if I can't say something, I will let you know, you know what, I can't answer that right now. If I'm not sure whether I can answer it, I will say to you, you know, give me your phone number, I'll make a phone call, and I'll get back to you. So it's, it's not something that you have to uh, walk by me and, and, and not say anything. If you have a question, I will do my very best to get the information to you in a timely manner. Okay? Thank you for coming out today. We appreciate your concern with us. We'll have one more meeting at 7 to catch the